Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to Ask Enke. Today we're looking at the brand new hair system that now exists in Blender 3.2. So for those who would like to test this out, you can simply go over to Blender or go all the way to where you get to find Download Blender and then don't download this, go all the way to the experimental branch and you would see that right here. So right here where we have the Blender 3.2.0, the alpha, you would notice that, you know, this is looking pretty nice. Now, once you fire this open, all you need to do is go over to the edit section, go to preference, and then go to the experimental section. Now, if you don't have the experimental section, that is no problem. Go to the section where you have interface and make sure you have the developer extra turned on. Now, once you turn this on, you need to go over to the experimental section and turn on the new curve type. If you'd like to read more about the new curve type, simply click on this button, it fires up, your browser and you can read more about this one and you can also read more about the other things that are coming over to blender so you can turn this on there's also the ev next we're going to talk about this one in subsequent videos there's also the new point cloud type which we're also going to talk about later and also something for the compositor but today we're looking at the new curve type now how this works is pretty interesting with those active if you hold down shift and tap a on your keyboard and go over to the section where you have curves you see the empty hair and the random hair and i know lots of you guys would argue no that doesn't exist in blender because if you're looking at blender 3.1 and you do this and go over to the curve section this is all you get to see and the curve actually works like hair you just need to orient yourself towards the geometry node side of things for you to get this to work so before we go in to explain how that actually works let's take a look or let's do a quick rundown of how hair literally works in blender so if you have a simple sphere and you like this to have hair you can go over to the section where you have your modifiers and you need to add a particle system now once you add a particle system you go over to the particle section and turn on hair and this is how you create hair now in several locations you might need to select certain parts and get the hair to happen there but this is literally how you create hair now if you like to have hair dynamics you can turn that on and then you can go ahead and do some you know tweakings and all that if you'd like to style this hair you can go over to your object mode and scroll down and change this to particle edit and from here you can tap f on the keyboard select the comb brush and you can comb this all the way down and this is just literally you know you styling hair and uh, doing the hair works basically now something else which is very interesting here is if you go back to the hair section once you have your hair selected if you go back to the hair section you can turn on the children mode where you can play with different types of children that exist within the hair there is a simple one the interpolated one and the non one so with these ones you can you know choose how this displays on your viewport and also how it displays within the render and this is just pretty dope because if you now go over to your cycle section you can render this and get the best out of it now there's a couple of other settings that you might need to know about but this is not a video targeted to the old style of making hair it's just to give you a bit of a rundown about how hair literally works in blender how you can now work with the brand new curve system because basically these are curves how you can work with a brand new curve system is this now we fire up 3.0 and we simply get rid of that cube hold down shift and tap a go over to the curve section you would notice that we have the random hair and the empty hair so the random hair is basically a couple of curves that has been put together that can help you create hair faster and within the operator section you would notice that we have location rotation but these are not the things that we're going to focus on if you go over to your property section you would notice that we have a couple of attributes that deals with radius and also the position and a surface now this brings to mind you attaching this to a surface so if there's a surface you like to attach this to by all means simply select that surface and attach it now before we talk about you attaching stuff to surfaces how you style this one is a little bit interesting so if you go over to the object mode section you can switch this to sculpt mode and within the sculpt mode if you tap f on the keyboard change your brush size you can use the combine tool to change how these things work so i believe because this is still within its work there's definitely something that should be added here so you can you know change how this works you can style this however you want which is literally very very nice i love what i'm looking at and then there is also the snake brush which you can use to make some tweaks and you can you know style this even more and this is looking gorgeous by the way and other things that you can do is you can add more points or more curves to certain areas of a model depending on if you've attached the surface to this model or not and then you can also grow or shrink the model so if we zoom all the way in we can you know grow this if you hold and control the keyboard 
you can shrink this and if you just simply click you can grow that let's style this a little bit more with the comb and that looks good now the place you which you would need to start facing a little bit of changes is when you like to render this so if you switch this over to the renderer in eevee this looks perfectly nice you know there's nothing wrong with it let's switch over to the object mode there's nothing wrong with this as it is basically the kind of hair you might want to render okay so this looks pretty dope so if you go a bit closer you can see the strands are looking very nice nothing too overly complicated but then if you now switch this over to cycles you would now see something like this and this is where a bit of tweaking starts coming into play now if you're looking at the previous type of hair which we talked about which is basically the hair that exists with blender you would notice that right here where we have the original hair you can go over to the particle system and all the way down you would see the hair shape now within the hair shape you can play with diameter of the hair which is going to change the size of the hair so in this case we can change the diameter of the root and you know if we increase this a little bit more you can see it begins to get even more bigger and then we can also play with the tip we can do the very same thing for the diameter scale and also the tip but that is not the case with this one now with this if you go over to where we have the properties you not notice anything here rather you're only going to see the radius and also the position and this is where the geometry node actually kicks into action if you switch over to the geometry nodes right now you can now grab this object and then hit the new button to generate a geometry node tree so within this node tree you can start making changes to a couple of things now one of the things that we'll make changes to is if we go over to where we have the curve you would notice that right around here we have the curve radius so we can plug in that curve radius and let's look at this from the render section so let's switch this over to rendering so that we can be seeing how you know bulky this is and from here we can drop this down to 0.001 and that would drop it exactly how you want now if you like to make other changes like increasing the land resampling these you can of course go ahead and do all of that so if you like to resample this hair you can obviously go in and just type in the word resample and you can resample the curve that you have here and this looks pretty nice and you probably wouldn't see any you know visual feedback you need to go over to the control section and you can see all of the things so how this works i would just simply rewire this here so you can see what the hair looks like right now we're looking at 4000 rows and if we go back and link this up you notice it increases to 5000 rows so if we increase this you can see that increases right there but visually you're not going to get that update within your viewport now how does this now make sense for working with other objects so what we're going to do is get a brand new scene so i'm just going to go in here say don't save and let's get ourselves something that we've been working with which is a uv sphere i'd just like to have this uv sphere like so and i think let's subdivide this by two so i'm just going to subdivide this by two apply the subdivision and instead of using this now we're just going to go in curve and now we're going to set an empty head now with the empty head there if we go over to where we see the properties you would now notice that it automatically attached the surface as that of the sphere now the way we get to work with this one is slightly interesting because at this point we need to start placing hair where we would like them to be just like you would do if you're working in Maya so if we go over to the section you probably not notice anything there because the hair addition exists within the hair curve so if we go over to the hair curve section we can click on the drop down and then we're going to go to the sculpt mode now within the sculpt mode there's a plus sign which we skipped earlier that plus sign is very very necessary at this point so with this here we can now go over and start placing the hair so if we'd like to have some hair around here maybe we'd like to have some hair around here maybe some hair around there maybe some hair around here we can of course go in and do all of that stuff so let's just undo this and place some reasonable hair on some parts so let's say we're just placing hair there and maybe hair somewhere here and another one somewhere like so all those other things that we talked about they are all valid here because at this point you can push this however you want push this however you want depending on the radius that you have so i can zoom all the way in and push this up use the snake brush to sort of you know make some things wiggle wiggle use the comb brush to comb some parts depending on what we want and then we can also comb this part out and okay let's leave this one looking like so all right, so we can comb this hair however we want 
And then, just like we mentioned earlier, we can now switch this and jump into geometry nodes. So if we have this selected, we can go over to geometry nodes and we can start doing some nice stuff. So all of the things that we just did earlier, we can redo all of them and even do some way more things. So remember that we sort of had this resampled earlier. We can resample that. I'm just gonna resample this and drop that right there. And you can see that. So we can resample this. So right now we don't have anything and the resampling is happening right here. So we don't necessarily see a lot of uh, visual feedback. So with this here, we can start doing some more stuff. So some of the things that you can do here is in certain cases, you might want to drive things. All right. So depending on what you like, actually, you can go in. If you like to throw in some noise value, you can throw in some noise value if that is something that you want. In some cases, you might also convert this curves to points. So you can do a curve to points and convert the curves to points and we can have them right there and you probably wouldn't see them because you know they're just really big the only way you can see them is if we switch back here so you can see them right there these are quite huge stuff so we will also change the points to instances so we can instance on point actually instance on point so yeah so we're just going to make some instances on the point and right here, we're going to drive some instances so we can get some cubes in, you know, load those cubes in and we can also play with the sizes. So I can drag this all the way in or all the way out and throw in that size and we can have the sizes like so. So there's just a whole lot of things that you can do with this at this point. So I'm just going to set this 0 0.01. I think that looks good. So we can set that as 0 0.01 and we can also you know, we can simply do lots of things with that. If we don't want to use the default value, we can also throw in the float curve. So with the float curve, we can drive the value as well. So I can just drive this all the way down to 0 0.01 and then start having fun with this. So we can have fun with this, depending on how we would like this to run through. And that is also something that is pretty dope. So we can have something like that. And this is just a simple example of things that you can now do with the hair system. And we can throw in that join. We love this join. So I can just drop that join there. And from here, we can go all the way and rewire this right in here. So we are having all this tiny little stuff and they're all happening right here. So something else that makes a lot of sense with all of this is regardless of the fact that you're doing this, you can still switch over to the sculpt mode and you guessed it, sculpt these things. And you can select this and extend them. And you can also select this other one and do some more nice things with it. One more thing to keep in mind is this, that if you have a model like this, say for example, you know, you've gone through, you've made a couple of style in here and there, and you like to add some more stuff. What you can do is if you go over to the sculpt section, make sure to turn on interpolate length and shape. So what this does is when you choose to start adding more stuff, it interpolates it based off the existing one. So we can go through and add this here. And you know, if I create something around here and choose to style it, I'm just gonna go in and use the comb tool to style this particular one to face downwards, for example. So let's say we style this one facing downwards all the way like so, what would happen is if I choose to start adding some more stuff like here, you know, you notice it travels like so. So if you don't want to interpolate the shape or maybe the length, then you need to turn this off. By default, this simply places one at a given time. So if you increase this all the way up, you can add as much as you want. And this is definitely gonna be very useful for prototyping stuff really really quick so you can add as much as you want and of course you can see some of these are peeling out to this point so just like we mentioned earlier you can use this to actually shrink some parts so if you hold down control you can shrink that part all the way up and we can also hold down control and shrink this part all the way and for anyone that's asking how we went through to add the colors how that works here is very extremely simple so you add the material so you drop the set material if you simply click and drag you can set material so you can set the material then you connect the material and this material should be defined prior to all of this so you now select 
from the drop down here select the material and that way you would have your material on the go and by all means you can go ahead and create different empties and use these things to drive your hair so let's say you like to make one for the eyebrow one for the beard one for the hair depending on what you want you can create different ones so that once you start controlling this you don't just have one uniform stuff that controls everything you can control these things independently and at the same time in terms of the shading as well you can also control these things however you want so this is just like a whole lot of nice cool things coming over to blender and i believe lots of creators would definitely find this one as a worthy addition and they can start using this to create even more generators and more stuff that will be useful to the entire community so this is more like it for those who like to try this out you can simply go over to the link in the description where you can check this and if you're looking for add-ons that you can use to make your hair creation process in blender even faster then you might want to consider checking out the folks at vfx grid as they have a truckload of hair related add-ons that just simply makes working with hair in blender super super cool Tell me what you guys think about this one in the comment section. And of course, if you like this video or you like something from this, you can go ahead and give a like and don't forget to share with a friend. And until I see you guys in the next one, peace.